His next idea was to come up with a specialized popsicle. <laughs> they couldn't find a vendor that was willing to make one. They didn't like the flavor. Scotch. <laughs> so then there was a day Jack, Jack came up with a terrific idea. He came up with a board game. This is way, way back, 30, 40 years ago. And at that time, this board game involved buying and selling real estate, railroads, and if you landed on the wrong box, you went to jail. Jack thought it was a great idea. Unfortunately, he was beaten to the punch by Parker Brothers. He never really forgave them, but really what added insult to injury was that they stole his identity and put his picture on the box. Actually, some of these pictures here are pretty close to it. So it's a true story. So, there was another little situation where Jack was doing charity work. And at that time there was a tournament, I believe it was for MSPCC. Again with Attorney DeGange. So they had finished their golf and it was very important for them to go to another function. It was at the ferry way. <laughs> well, maybe it's, a lot of you know the story, but uh, they figured to be economical, it was a nice night for a ride. They took the golf cart from the golf course to ferry way. <laughs> a distance of a couple miles. Parked the golf cart, had their, uh, had their drinks, walked out, and who's there but the Beverly Police. <laughs> Their first idea was to just bring him back to Denver State Hospital. <laughs> but really, Jack's a humanitarian. He reminded me of a story, which probably wasn't true, but <laughs> there was an old friend of his, this guy's name was Joe, and he believed heavily in reincarnation. He thought he was coming back from the dead. And in his will, he asked that money be placed in his casket before he was laid to rest. So he called Jack, he called the priest, and he called his accountant. And he gave them each $25,000. And he said to them, I really believe I'm coming back from the dead, and after everybody leaves my casket, I want you to put the money in the casket so that when I come to, the money is going to be there. So the priest goes in first, and he puts the $25,000 in the casket. Then the accountant walks in, and he puts the $25,000 in the, in the uh, casket. Jack goes in, takes the money, and writes the guy a check for $75,000. <laughs> I've known Jack for many years, obviously, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, but over the years, I've gotten to know some of his mannerisms, which are quite humorous. It's always difficult to assess credibility in a case, and as a probation officer, I might uh, make every effort to figure out what's going on. But usually I could tell when Jack was lying. His lips were moving. We also got to learn over the years that Jack had many mannerisms that he repeated and he expanded with the times. He would come out with different ideas and honestly, God, we always thought that he rehearsed at home, probably in the mirror, hopefully alone, and um, the words were frequently, he'd walk into the courtroom or he'd walk into probation and he'd want to present his case and before he even got into the room, he'd say, geez, I'm really worried about this one. I don't know what I'm going to do. And even though he'd say that, you knew that he knew what he wanted to do. He was just trying to get you convinced to do it. <laughs> so he would expand his words, and he would get in front of the judge, and he'd say, quite frankly, Your Honor, and seriously, Your Honor, and unequivocally, my client is innocent of any contempt. 
The judge would question him further and say, Judge, quite clearly, frankly, seriously, without question, that's when you knew John was, Jack was on the ropes. <laughs> there was another story about Jack. He was trying to settle an accident claim, and this was when a lot of insurance cases were abused and people were trying to take the money from the insurance companies. So um, Jack filed a claim on behalf of four clients. They were all injured in a car accident. So he called up the insurance adjuster and he was trying to settle uh, for each of his clients. All four of them were in the accident, terribly, terribly hurt. It was clear and unequivocally that there was damage <laughs> to these four individuals. And he was gonna do everything he could on, on their behalf. So he called up the adjuster. He's pursuing his case for the four people. And the adjuster says, well, geez, Jack, I got the uh, police report here. And it says that only two people were in the car at the time of the accident. <laughs> he says, that can't, be a, that can't be right. There must be a mistake. So they argue back and forth. And the adjuster speaks again to the police officer. The police officer tells Jack, no, there was two people in the car. Jack calls the adjuster back. The adjuster says, OK, you're going to settle for two? And he said, well, would you settle for three? 